pleasure to be here to present my research output. My name is Wen Xu and I came from the University of Hong Kong. Now I'm the final year PhD student. I'm going to graduate end of this month. <laughs> so, new, 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 new <laughs> so the title of my presentation is Role of Micro C in Modulating the Paracline Crestone Between Receptor Cancer Cells and Stroma Fibrous in the Tumor Microenvironment. So firstly, uh, as mentioned by my colleagues in the lead, is that receptor cancer is the sixth most lethal cancer worldwide, and the ESCC is the most common subtype. So the five years survival rate of the ESCC is quite poor because the disease uh, is very easy to metastasis and it's, it's not sensitive to the chemo uh, therapy. So in the current cancer biology, there are two concepts are gaining increasing appreciation. There are tumor microenvironment and the tumor microenvironment. For the tumor microenvironment, it means that cancer is not a single disease, it's a very complex disease. The primary tumor could affect other components of the body system and it could affect other organs of the body. So tumor is not a single disease, but a very systematic disease. For the tumor microenvironment, it means that in the tumor microenvironment, besides the cancer cell, there are many other cell types. For example, the fibroblasts and the cellular cells and many other cell types. There is a dynamic evolution and a very close uh, net uh, network and the crosstalk between different cell types. And uh, their communication could affect the diagnosis and the output of this disease. So, Inhibitor of differentiation protein 1, named ID1, is overexpressed in the majority of ESCC cases. Actually, it's overexpressed in more than 90% of the ESCC cases. And in our previous study, we demonstrated that ID1 overexpression in human ESCC cells are more tumorigenic, and due to the ID1 induced insulin like growth factor 2, that is IGF2, which is an autocrine minor. So in our previous study, we found a very interesting phenomenon. Uh, when we took use of the human ESCC and the sub, uh, subcutaneous inject into the mice and establish the tumor xenograft, we, we analyzed the tumor xenograft by using the immunohistochemistry. We did observe uh, increased microvensity densities indicated by CD31 in the ID1 expression mice. However, when we collect the mouse serum and subject it to the ELISA analyze, we found that there's no change of human VEGF among these three groups, but very uh, significant elevation of mouse, mouse VEGF in the, uh, in the ID1 or expression mouse. Please remember that previously we used the human ESCC cells. So this uh, phenomenon uh, suggests that maybe Besides the autocrine manner we mentioned previously, the ID1 expression tumor could orchestrate the tumor progression locally and systematically by secreting IGF2 in an auto in a paroquine or endocrine manner. So here is the objective. Firstly, we would like to study the paroquine effect of the IGF2 on fibroblasts. So firstly, we use the condition medium of the cancer cell to attract the fibroblasts. And our result demonstrated that the condition medium from the ID1 expression cancer cell could significantly increase the migration of the fibroblasts. However, SHHF2 or neutralizing by using the IGF2 antibody could, significant, could significantly abolish this effect. Uh, the Western Broad and the ELISA result showed that the condition medium from the ID1 expression cancer cell <coughs> could induce the fibroblasts to put produce more VEGF, both in protein level and the secretion level. However, SH IGF2 or neutralizing by using IGF2 antibody could significantly abolish or attenuate this effect. So secondly, we would like to study the role of the IGF2 activated fibroblasts in the tumor microenvironment. So uh, uh, considering the important role of the bone marrow cell here, we would like to know whether the IG1 express or uh, uh, expression xenograft have effect on the bone marrow. So firstly, we establish a tumor xenograft by using the uh, 
control an algebra expression or algebra equation or SH object to uh, uh, cancer cells, and we collect the xenograft and subject it to the flow cytometry by using several important cell surface markers. For example, for F480, CD11B, CD335, with one VGF R1 and VGF R2. We observed and only observed the elevation of uh, VGF R1 cells in the ID1 overexpression mice. Meanwhile, we collect so the bone marrow of the mice and uh, analyze by using the flow cytometry using the similar cell markers and uh, consistently we found the elevation of the VGF R1 positive cells in the ID1 overexpression mice. So how about the role of the fibroblasts in the tumor microenvironment? So firstly, we use the RJ2 to treat fibroblasts and we con uh, collect the conditional media and treat the endothelial cells, HUVC cell here. And our results show that the conditional media from RJ2 treated fibroblasts could induce the proliferation, migration, and the true formation of the endothelial cells. Suggesting that the RJ2 treated fibroblasts could drive the in vitro angiogenesis in the tumor microenvironment. So thirdly, we would like to know the role of the ID1, RGF2, VGF, VGFR regulation access in the tumor growth and metastasis of the subject cancer. So firstly, we established the tumor xenograft model. We established the, uh, we established the tumor xenograft and we collect the bone marrow and the uh, uh, mixed with the subject cancer and the subject in injured into the secondary mouse and we treat the cells with different uh, neutralizing antibody. This is antibody against the VGF R1 with different dose and different time point. And the results show that we could see that the bone marrow cell from the R1 expression mouse could facilitate the most rapid tumor growth. However, uh, SH RGF2 or treatment with different VGF R1 neutralizing antibody could significantly suppress the tumor growth. So how about the uh, metastasis? Similarly, we established the tumor metastasis uh, <coughs> models. Uh, we uh, established the tumor xenograph, and we collect the bone marrow, and mix with the cancer cell, and uh, subjected it inject into the secondary mouse, and treat the mouse with different antivirus. And the results show that the bone marrow from the IDW expression mouse is most uh, uh, it could cause the most rapid tumor metastasis in the lung. However, treat with the uh, VGF R1 neutralizing antibody or SH RGF2 could uh, significantly suppress the tumor metastasis. So, lastly, we would like to know the molecular mechanism by which RGF2 could uh, regulate VGF in the fibroblast. So, here we focus on the uh, microRNA because microRNA is very uh, Powerful uh, in, uh, in in the in the cancer biology. So here we would like to screen the microRNA which could regulate the regulation of IGF2 on VGF. So firstly, uh, we treat the fibroblast with IGF2, and we screen the microRNA which down regulated upon IGF2 uh, regulation, and we named it as the microRNA. Uh, 2A. On the other hand, we're using the in silico prediction and uh, several different uh, in silico uh, software and uh, found the micron, screen micron, which, uh, which could uh, directly bind with the VGF and name it as the micron 2B. And we overlap A and B and found a very interesting micron, micron 29C. And here shows the base pairing between the micron 29C and the VGF. So the uh, take my current assay show that the IGF2, the treatment of IGF2 can uh, decrease the expression of micron 29C, and the gain and the loss of function study show that micron 29C could negatively re regulate the expression of VGF. So, the, so lastly, we would like to know whether there is a, a physical and a direct binding between micron 29C and the VGF. And the Luciferous report actually showed that all express of micro-29C could decrease the Luciferous activities of VEGF. We want to confirm this finding, so we performed the star mutation by using the uh, mutation kit. 
and our results show that this phenomenon didn't happen when the cells were uh, co-transpect -tra co with micron 29C and the VEGF3 UPR mutation. So this result suggests that there's a direct bending between the micron 29C and the VEGF. So in summary of these studies, so IL-1 is all expressed in the uh, cancer cells and the IL-1 could secret IGF-2. Uh, IGF-2 could activate fibroblasts and stimulate fibroblasts to secret VEGF. On the head, this VEGF will go back to the primary tumor to facilitate the tumor growth. On the other hand, uh, those VEGF could uh, circulate in the blood vessel to the different organs of the body, for example, bone marrow, and stimulate the bone marrow to produce the bone, um, VEGF r positive bone marrow cells. Uh, those cells could migrate to the long side or this distant size, and those cells could uh, facilitate this uh, tumor metastasis. However, if we could uh, blockage with VEGF our neutralizing antibodies, and this phenomenon didn't happen. So this is the conclusion. Firstly, I want to induce artificial to activate fibroblasts to secure VEGF by downregulating micron 29 c Secondly, IGF2 activated fibroblasts exert multifacial role on the, uh, in the tumor microenvironment by driving androgenesis. Uh, thirdly, it's micron 29 c modulated the parochon crosstalk between separate cancer cells and stroma fibroblasts in the tumor microenvironment. Last but not least, I would like to thank my supervisor, all the staff, and uh, all the ground support, and all the collaborators. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, very clear uh, presentation. Yes. Uh, are there questions from the audience? Uh, again, the same uh, same question as, as before, uh, because we are in Turkey. Yes, yes. What's your yes. Thought? yes, as I mentioned in the last slide, I guess we use the VGF R1 interesting article. Actually, this project is clever to with, um, with a company is uh, producing this uh, VGF R1 antibody and actually this uh, antibody is in the phase two clinical okay. trial so I think my uh, study provide more evidence to suggest that this uh, antibody is very useful especially in suppressed uh, tumor angiogenesis you know tumor angiogenesis no. is, could support the tumor growth yeah yeah so there are anti-VEGF yeah. yeah. so, so I think my study provide uh, you know, more, more evidence to support that yeah and it's a phase two, it's a better in China? No, it's uh, MD. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we, we, we have uh, several uh, collaboration projects. Yes. Okay. And then did you do screen other antibodies, uh, DDGF? Yeah. Uh, we, we, we once have a project of IGF2 antibodies. So this is another project. IGF2. Yes, the results are quite uh, good. There are some studies done uh, in Italy and also the NIH mm. showing that Tonadil, for example, an anti HIV drug has a uh, good potent anti HIV effect. Oh. So it was recommended for the treatment of Capus sarcoma. And we've seen in the clinic when we started to use it, Tonadil that patients with scapus and sarcoma mm. uh, do not need it other treatment than wow. antiretroviral therapy when they with Tonadil. So, like Barbara Ansori, it's her name, I think it's in Milan now, was the NIH. Mm. She did a lot of studies for Tonadil uh, inhibiting angiogenesis, especially in uh, scapus sarcoma and animal models. We just we got it. Thank you very much.